Hello Yarny friends! It is finally here! The tutorial for the Hudson's Bay Four Point Blanket. It is finally done and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. I did put fringe on my short edges because I love a good fringe. Even though that's not authentic, I still did it. So that is what we have here. Now on um, the tutorial, I will go through everything that you need to make this blanket for yourself. However, um, I will say that it would be a benefit to you to um, pay for the purchase diagram pattern just so you don't have to keep re-watching the video if that is not what you want to do. But I am planning on editing it so that you should have everything that you need to create the blanket without that because I always want to make sure that there is some sort of free access to this um, lovely creation here. Um, but I will link down in the description the link to the paid pattern so that if you want to purchase the diagram, you can. It's kind of a more complicated make. Um, and so, yeah, that might be a benefit to you. But like I said, absolutely not required to create this piece. But I, I, I like I like me a good reference sheet. So it's there if that is what you want. And if that's your speed, check it out. Um, but in the meantime, we will go ahead and get into this. Also, if you have not already, please subscribe to the channel because I love making knitting machine blankets. I am planning on making more. I have more in the works right now that I would love to share with you guys and crochet tutorials and patterns as well. Those are coming up soon as well and all kinds of wonderful, big, thick, squishy, yarny goodness. So if that is your speed, please subscribe. Um, like this video if you are planning on making this or just love a good Hudson's Bay stripe. It is so beautiful. I love it so much. If you want to know more about the history of this blanket, I go into that a little bit more in the link up in the cards up there so you can see exactly a little bit more about the history of this, what exactly these four points mean on a blanket, and all that good stuff. Also, if you love this content, you like the channel, you want to support the channel, if you're not planning on buying a pattern, maybe you want to buy me a coffee. If that is more your speed, go ahead and check out the link to ko-fi.com. It is ko-fi.com slash play. And we will go ahead and get started in on this tutorial. All right, let's get to it, guys. All right, so before we get started, I'm going to show you all the things that you're going to need for this tutorial. Let me say first off that you can make this blanket using only your 46 machine if you choose to. You're just not going to have um, <clears throat> the four point stripes on the side of the blanket to make it very accurate looking to a Hudson's Bay blanket, but those are not required. You can still make this blanket, um, but to do that, I'm using a 22 needle machine for you. So that'll be the second half of the um, the demonstration on my machines but if you only have a 46 or a 48 needle machine you can definitely still make this blanket um, but I also used my 22 to get those four point marks on the side of the blanket to make it very accurate so you're gonna need um, your pattern which I have over here I will be sure to link um, the diagram pattern down in the description below I will have that available at yarn at play, um, dot com. so you have all the row counts the color plotting everything that you need in a nice digital created document for you um, I'm also using a yarn tensioner today I got this one from Savlaba on Etsy so I will have that link in the description you're gonna need a crochet hook a yarn needle. I'm using a bent tip yarn needle. I think these are Susan Bates um, and scissors and of course your yarn. So the yarn that I'm using today for the main color of the blanket I'm using I love this yarn in linen. That is the main color there and I am also using um, Yarn Be Soft and Sleek in these four colors. Uh, this is mustard, red, navy, and kale. Are the names of these colors that will be included in the pattern as well but if you don't want to have to purchase the diagram those are the names of your colors mustard red navy and kale if you use the same yarn as me you obviously can substitute for whatever yarn you prefer to use this is just yarn that i know works up really well on my machine and so that is why i am working with it today so you're going to need some waste yarn as well 
So I just have some waster in here. So to get started, go ahead and start casting on with your waste yarn. Um, <clears throat> and I'm starting, as you can see here, my black pins are here. I'm gonna go ahead and start right after the black pins because that helps me move my color jog to the back of my blanket a little bit easier. That's just personal preference. If you don't wanna start after the black pins, you can obviously start with the first one. But because on every color change, I'm gonna be working two needles past um, my start and end points. I just like having um, my needles, my black needles be uh, to start right after them. Okay, I think that all made sense. Uh, so go ahead and cast on. With your waste yarn, you can do anywhere between five and 10 rows of waste yarn. I usually do seven. I've never had an issue of unraveling when I get to the end if I'm using at least seven rows of waste yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank those out and then um, start going through the color plotting with you. All right. Okay, so that's my waste yarn cast on. Now since this is the start of my tube and this is just waste yarn, I am gonna be color changing right after the black pin. So we only do two past when we're in the middle of our blanket. When you're at the start of your blanket, you always do right at your start and end point. So go ahead and trim that off. Put your tail in the middle, just like that. And then grab your main color yarn, which is the linen color that I'm using. Now, um, if you know anything about how Hudson Bay blankets look, they're not pure white. That's why I went with this linen color. White would be too bright, I think, for this blanket. I actually would have preferred to go with a slightly darker shade, but um, the one that I actually went to the store to purchase was out of stock at the time. So this was the next closest shade. It's just a tiny smidge lighter than I had planned, but it still is turning out really nice. So I'm not too worried about it. So go ahead and get your color change going here. Now I will show you, put that in there, um, the pattern that I'm working from and how to read these patterns. Back this up a little bit. So this is my handwritten pattern. The pattern that I will have available for sale is going to be um, created in a, in a digital document so you won't have all of my personal handwriting. It'll be an actual digital document for you. But this is just um, what I drew up. I actually drew up another one, but my daughter scribbled all over it, so I redrew it so I could show it to you guys here. I have all of my row counts going down here on the side so that I don't have to switch my counter all the time, and my row counts are right here um, where my color changes end. So the row count right here, so you see that's 44. That's the row count that I need to be on when I finish the color next to it. So when I finish with navy, my row counter needs to be at 44. Um, down here on the side over here, this is where I keep track of how many rows there are per section. So 30, 14, 74, 14 a bunch, and then 30 again. So this blanket comes out to having a total of 330 rows. So it makes for a really nice afghan throw size. Up here at the top, <clears throat> I have how my panels are divided. So like I said, you can do this entire thing on your 46 or 48 needle machine. You would just do a total of seven panels and sew them together. I am doing it so I can get these if you know a Hudson Bay blanket, they have these four point marks on the side. That's how they were able to establish the cost of the blanket. That's how many beaver pelts that those blankets cost back in the day um, for the Hudson Bay Company. And so I want my blanket, my replica blanket, to have those four point marks on there. I just think that's a really cool historical touch. So I'm using my 22 machine and my 46. So my 22 panels are gonna be on either side but the four point marks are only on one side and that is historically accurate. You don't wanna make both of your 22 panels the same. So the only panel that you make differently is this first 22 panel here, which is gonna have these different stitch row counts on them, which I calculated for and are down here. But I'll go over that in the video as well. Otherwise, every single blanket, even this other two, 22 um, machine panel is gonna be the exact same pattern all the way through. So. Hopefully <laughs> that'll make sense as we go along. Um, it's just basically in construction of the final blanket 
that you just need to have that one little skinny panel that's different but if you just want to make total of seven panels make them all the same you're not worried about that four point mark you only need one machine for this you don't need to if you don't want to use two or don't have access to two you just won't get those four point marks on the side all right hopefully that was clear i'm going to go ahead and start cranking this out um my first section of rows here I need to do 30 rows for my first section in this linen color and then I'm going to be doing my color changes all the way down and each of these row counts are 14 so 30 and then 14 all the way down and then this one's going to be 74 the big portion here in the middle 74 rows and then a bunch of 14 the color changes are all equal including those white stripes they're all equal size and then 30 down here at the end again so that's your row counts along the side um and like i said if you want to have access to this so you can have a printed out version just sitting next to you so you don't have to have a screenshot or anything like that i will make this available at yarnetplay.com all right i'm going to go ahead and crank out uh, my first 30 rows and then i will meet you at the first color change All right, there is my first 30 rows completed. I will show you how I go ahead and do this color change. Like I said, you wanna go two past your initial starting point here. So this is my last black needle. I'm gonna slowly crank two needles past that. So I am right here. I'm gonna cut my yarn and we're gonna pick up our first color that we need. And that color is going to be navy. Using our navy color for our first stripe. And the order of the colors go navy, yellow, red, and green with a stripe of 14 rows of white in between each stripe. So go ahead and take that out. Ooh, make sure it stays on your last hook here. And then I'm going to drape my navy color right in there. Hook that into my yarn tensioner. And I'm going to crank out my first 14 rows of my first color change. So I am actually at 43 rows right now. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm at 43 rows right now. I need to stop and do my color change at row 44. But when I hit the row before, I just crank this around until my tails are on the opposite side of me. So it's easiest for me to reach them and see them easily. And then we're going to go ahead and tie a knot right here to close up this hole don't want to be able to poke your finger through and so I actually finalize all my color change knots while I'm actually working on the piece itself some people do it after I prefer to do it right away so I don't have to tube, turn the tube inside out and have that extra step later so um, make sure that you are keeping track of your tension so you're not pulling your stitches so they pucker you don't want any puckered stitches but just pull that so it matches the tension around it do another overhand knot just to secure that in place and then I actually do a third one and this is the one that I really pull on tight to make sure that that is never coming out. Trim my tails. And that is a finalized color change. Now I'm just going to go ahead and crank this around the rest of the way until my row counter hits 44 rows. Then I'm going to crank two needles past, just like I did on my previous one. And then I'm going to color change back to my linen color. And that is how you're going to do every single color change down the entirety of your blanket or your panels excuse me following that exact same pattern so the first set of rows was 30 the stripes are all 14 including the white stripes they're all 14 the middle bigger section is 74 rows then back to your 14 row color changes and then two 30 rows of the linen color to finish it off after you're done with the navy color on the other end so <clears throat> I'm just going to crank this out. I'm probably going to grab my um, adapter to crank this out a little bit faster. 
um, get through those color changes a little bit quicker, but I will meet you when we are all finished with this panel, and then I will go over how to do the four-point panel um, on the 22 machine when we get there. So, all right, I'm going to keep cranking this out, and I'll meet you when I'm all done with this panel. Okay, so I have finished my panel on my 46 needle machine. And if you were wondering, I'm not doing, I wouldn't do any adjustments for a 48 needle machine. I think that you'd be fine. The extra width wouldn't be an issue. But um, this is my completed panel on my 46 needle machine. A longer weight portion at the end. My 14 row stripes. Longer portion in the middle and my 14 inch strip. So if you don't have a 22 needle machine, just do that. Do seven panels of this, stitch it together, you're done. Um, if you are using your 22 needle machine to get those four point lines, <clears throat> this is what you're gonna do for that. Now I have since adjusted my math slightly here. Um, I went and double checked um, what I saw pictures online of um, the blanket and how those rows kind of evened out. So this is the math that I'm going with for my row counts for the point stripes. Um, the rest of the blanket is going to be the same, even the other 22 row um, tube that I'm doing on the edge. You only need to do one for the four point side of the blanket. So that's what this is for. So just like with your last one, you're gonna start with exactly the same row counts until you get to here. And then we are going to switch our row counts to the row counts down here for our point. So I'm going to go ahead and get the first part of this blanket knocked out until I get to the end of my green color change. And then I will jump down here and I will film that part so you know how to do the four point row counts. Okay, so I caught myself because I was listening to my audio book and I just started jogging away, but I caught myself. So I have done <clears throat> the full beginning straight pattern on my pattern so I am up to the green here says it is row 128 so I have changed color at row 28 just like I would for all the other panels and now I am here and I have done a total of eight more rows beyond that so right now I am at row 138 for this color change now I, here is my last black pin right here and I have stitched two beyond. So I'm up to my very first color change for the four point section of the blanket, okay? So what we're gonna do is for the four point section of the blanket, the pattern is gonna become 10 rows for the first. So between the green and your first point, you're gonna do 10 rows. And then for each point row after that, it's gonna be a eight row gap. But for each point that you do, each of these skinny um, little notches on the side of the blanket, you, it's going to be two rows. So the pattern here is 10 rows to start, so 128 to 138, and then you're going to do two rows in navy to one, row 140, eight rows in white two more rows in navy to 150, two row, or eight rows in white, two more rows in navy to 160, eight rows in white, and two more rows um, in navy to get to 170, and then you're gonna finish out in your white-ish color, which is linen, but you're gonna finish that um, whitish color out until you hit row 202. Whew, I hope that makes sense. Um, but that is how you're gonna do your row color changes. So just use your navy color. And I'm at row one, 138 right here, two notches past my last black needle. I am going to go ahead and knit two rows in that. And now I am already to my next color change. So I'm gonna pick up my color, which is linen, my lightest or white off-white color and I'm going to do a color change. Now these knots because they're so close to here I'll probably tie them off as I get farther into it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and stitch eight rows in my linen color, my off-white color, until I get to row 148. All right, <clears throat> I just turned row 147. So I'm actually going to go ahead and tie these knots off. So this is my top color change and my bottom color change. So I'm going to do my bottom color change first. Checking to make sure I'm not puckering those stitches with my tension that I'm pulling those knots to. I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. Trim my extra long ends and then I'm going to do the next one here. Making sure I have the correct tension there. Doing my triple knots that I usually do. Trimming my ends there. All right. I'm going to crank this to finish off row 148 knitting two needles past. And now I need to do two rows of navy. So that is the pattern once you get past the green color change it is 10 rows in linen or off-white two rows in navy eight rows in linen or off-white two rows in navy eight rows of linen or off-white two rows of navy until you get a total of four navy stripes because this is a four point blanket So I just did two rows of navy. I'm going to do my color change. This is the most complicated strip out of all of them. The rest of them are all much easier and follow the same color change pattern. This is just, I grew up <laughs> going to uh, pre-revolutionary war historical reenactments. And so I grew up loving and wanting a Hudson's Bay four point blanket. So this is my way of recreating that without spending, you know, like sometimes they can cost like up to $800. They're really expensive. Um, so this is my way of replicating that without having to spend nearly as much money to create it. But I still want those four point notches on the side because it's not a Hudson's Bay blanket to me if it doesn't have the actual four points of a Hudson's Bay four point blanket. So, you know, that is what we are working on here. I'm gonna finish this color change. I'm on 157, just turned over to row 158. Now I'm gonna do two more rows of navy. And keep doing the same pattern until you get your four points. All right, so I showed you guys how I cast on with my waist yarn. I didn't show you how I cast off with my waist yarn. So I'm at my last color change, row 330. I just added my waist yarn for the color change. I'm gonna go ahead and crank out a few rows here. All right. So that's seven rows for me. I'm just going to cut my tail and I'm going to keep cranking until this falls off of my machine. Don't tie this knot. You'll be sad if you do because you need this to stay loose because this is the end of your tube and the waist yarn is going to be taken off. All right, there it goes. And I have my final 22 machine tube with my four point markers. There they are. 
for the side of my blanket. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to close off these tubes and how to sew them together and you should have everything that you need to finish off your blanket. All right, here, any friends, I have my tubes all completed here and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to close the ends of your tubes. Um, <clears throat> To get started, if you watched my last tutorial on the gingham blanket, this is the same way of closure that I'm doing here that I did on my last one. I'm just going to do a quick overview for you. You can see that I have one end here and both of my tails are off to one side and I have my crochet hook ready. Now I am right handed so I'm going to be working right to left. If you are left handed you're probably going to want to work left to right. But because I'm right handed I have my tails off to the right here excuse me, off to the left here. And I am going to go ahead and um, find the opposing stitches to where my yarn is coming out here on the other side. And the way that I do that is I just look at the stitches where my yarn's coming out of. Now this one can be a little sneaky because this is actually the white yarn on this side is coming out of one row lower. But I'm looking at this stitch, these two stitches right here are the ending stitches that I need. So in order to make sure that I have the correct opposing side stitches, what I do is I just kind of hold my work like this and I just pinch my stitches all the way across to make sure that these two stitches are the ones that I'm going to be starting with over on this side for my closing. And now the way that I close my tubes is that I start with the bottom loop here of these two on the side. I poke my hook through there. I'm going to go ahead and grab that loop right on the top there. I'm going to pull that top loop through the bottom loop. Now I'm going to go to this bottom loop because we're always going bottom top, bottom top, bottom top, all the way across. I'm going to go to that bottom loop there, hook through, and then I'm going to go ahead and hook that loop and pull it through the one that was on my hook. I'm going to go to the top loop right here, the next top loop, hook it through, and pull that loop through the one on my hook. And I'm going to keep doing that until I get all the way across, going bottom top, bottom top, bottom top, until my end is fully closed here. Now it does get a little bit fiddly over at the other end just because it's a little bit more difficult to see your stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and meet you at the end and show you what it looks like to finish up right over here. But keep going bottom top, bottom top, all the way across. Okay, so here I am on the end. I have four stitches left that I need to work into. So I'm going to go ahead and do my bottom stitch because that's the one that I have next. Pull it through and then the top stitch and pull it through and this is where it gets a little bit tricky to see but if you've kind of been tugging on your tails this whole time you should still be able to see your stitches. Now with this one remember we have that row down here. That's not the stitch that we're going to go into. We want to go into the top row always making sure that we pick up that last loop on your bottom side. And then there is still one more stitch hiding up here and your waist yarn tail will be coming out of that stitch. All right, so you can see that little loop right there. Make sure you don't lose that one and that you pick it up. Otherwise your work will unravel. You do not want to miss that last stitch even though it likes to hide in there. All right, so pull that one through, then grab your working yarn tail here, yarn over, pull through the loop on the hook, yarn over, and pull through the hook on your, or the loop on your hook again, and pull it all the way through, okay? And then we're just gonna take out our waist yarn here, and tighten down our knot, and then we're going to do the exact same thing on each and every end of all of our tubes, and that is how you're going to get a really beautiful closure on the ends of all of these, and as long as your row counts are correct, 
<clears throat> you should not have any issues joining at all. And even if your um, row counts were not correct, I will show you how to make adjustments as you go if you need to. So this still has a bit of stretch to it, which is nice. And it is beautifully even and looks really good. And then with this tail, I'm just going to go ahead and pull on the tail and snug down these little stitches here. And then I'll make a nice little knot. That's not going anywhere at all. It's never going to unravel. And I am uh, going to go ahead and finish up all the ends. And then we are good to start joining up our rows. All right, now that we have all of our panels completed, I am going to show you how to join our panels together. Um, to make this blanket, I used mattress stitch, which actually is not my favorite joining technique, but I chose to do it just for this one. Um, you can use any joining technique that you prefer. Uh, my favorite is the slip stitch join, which would work for this. You just have um, a small ridge on the back of your blanket if that's what you chose to use. I didn't want that this time around, so that is why I use the mattress stitch. So I'm going to show you how I mattress stitch join this blanket together. Now you're going to want um, the linen yarn color that you used for your main color of the blanket and make sure that you have a really long um, piece of yarn for this. It's going to be irritating to work with a huge super long piece of yarn but you want to make sure, at least for me, I don't like having to tie off in the middle of panel joins so I want my yarn to be at least as long as the length of my panels. Sorry the sun is shining it might cause a little bit of strange contrast there. Um, <clears throat> so since I have my nice long piece of yarn. I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle. I like using um, bent needles when I do mattress stitch. Um, I will make sure that they are linked in the description box below if you are interested in getting yourself some bent yarn needles. Um, this one is actually not my favorite, but it's what I had on hand. So this is the one that I'm using today. Go ahead and thread your needle. And you're not going to tie a knot on the other end of it, so just be aware of that. Pull your yarn. It'll make it a little bit easier to work with if you pull it so that it's um, nearly half the length of the yarn. Um, and then you can always adjust the um, length of the yarn that's folded over as you go. So I have it, so it's right about there right now. You can see that's my tail technically, and this is my working yarn here. Um, <clears throat> it just shortens the length of that yarn that you have to work with. So I need to find the panel that I'm joining to here, which is this one right here. This is the back side of my blanket that I have up. As you can see, there's this little jog over here. So I want my panel to be the back side. Now, how do you determine what is the front and the back side of your panel? Um, if you already closed your ends, which is what I recommend doing, um, if you followed how to close ends, you should know how to do that already. Um, and then look for where you are closest here. Um, you'll see when this end is flat that I have a jog over here. I can see that's where my um, color changes. So this is a side that I want to be up against this side as well. Um, <clears throat> Let me see here. And then this is my four point panel as well. These are my four points. Um, the stitch counts are in the pattern, um, or the row counts, excuse me, so that you should be able to do that without any issue. Okay, there we go. Let me see here. Now your tubes can curl, as you can see. My tube has curled a little bit. I'm just gonna try and get it as straight as I can because when we do mattress stitch we uh, work in between the V's of a row and so um, we're going to follow the same row down all the way so I want to make sure that that panel is as close to not being twisted as I can so I usually being um, right handed I usually start down on the right side of my work and work left, but you can do whichever way is most comfortable for you. So I am going to actually turn this. I'm going to turn my panel around because I want, I prefer my jogs to um, 
not be right up against each other. So now the dog is over here and the dog is over here on the side, if that makes sense. Now this might look like it's shorter. It's not, the row count is correct. This is just stretched a bit, but as you match or stitch, this will stretch and your row counts will match. Okay. <clears throat> so what you're gonna, gonna wanna do first, I'll get real close up here so you can see this really well. I still have a tail from my previous panel, that is fine. So what I'm going to do is I am looking for um, the V's where the bottom of the V is pointing towards where my hand is working. I find it easier to work into the bottoms of the V's than into the tops. Say if we were on this one, I'd be working into the top of a V. I find it easier to work into the bottom of the V. So that's what I'm looking for is those, the arrows pointing or the points of those V to be pointing down towards my working hand, which should be, um, your last row here. So <clears throat> here are my two rows. You can see my V's are both pointing down this way. And if you stay between these two all the way down, you should not have any twisting or any issues with that at all. Okay. So the way that I attach my yarn is that I look I twist this up slightly so I can see where these last two stitches are here. And then that is where I'm going to attach. So I go through both loops of there and then poke it through over here. And then I pull my yarn all the way through. Like I said, you're gonna have a nice long tail it can get tangled in on itself. It's a little frustrating to work with sometimes, but I still prefer that over having to add yarn in um, while I am doing my mattress stitch join. So hang in there with the long tail. All right, so I have the end of my yarn here and my working yarn, and I just do a double knot across the top of those stitches. Just a double overhand knot, making sure that my tail is long enough that it'll be easy to weave in when I'm all done. All right, get this tail out of here. We don't need that in the way. All right, <clears throat> pardon my voice. I'm getting over a bad cold. I've had it for forever. I'm just still a little croaky, so hang in there with me. Um, so now that we have this here, remember we're looking for, again, those rows that will have the V's pointing towards your working hand, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. And I'm going to poke my needle in up through the top where I first did my tie-in, those top stitches, not the ones on the side. And then I poke up through the bottom of that first V right there. Okay. I'm going to pull my yarn all the way through. All right, so now my yarn is poking through that first V right here. Now I'm gonna go across the other way and I'm gonna look for the other V right here that um, is with the V pointing down and I'm gonna go into that first V and pick up that first bar in between the V. So we're not working into the V here. We're poking our needle under and picking up the bar that is in between those V's. I'm gonna pull that all the way through. All right, and now we are getting our mattress stitch started. So the way that this works is you're gonna go back and forth and for those first ones, we just picked up one via or one bar at a time. This time we're gonna pick up one, two bars on this side. Pull that through. And then look on the other side where your yarn is coming out of. 
okay? Our yarn that we are working yarn is coming through this stitch right here. So I'm gonna poke back into that same stitch where my yarn is coming out of, and I'm gonna pick up the next one, two bars on the other side and pull that all the way through. And then you're going to do that exact same thing again. So go to your first side, see where your working yarn is coming through that stitch, poke back into that same stitch, pick up one, two bars, pull all the way through, and then go over to the other side. Look where your working yarn is coming out of, poke back into that same stitch, and pick up one, two bars. And that's how you're going to keep going down the entire length of your tube to join it. Now, there are some tricks um, for getting this join so that your colors line up perfectly. So I'm going to work this down a little bit. And then when I get to the color change, I will show you what you can do so that on the opposite side of your work, the front side of your work, you have a seamless join. There's no jogging at all on the front of your piece, okay? So I will go ahead and work down um, until I get to the color change, and then we'll start back up. All right, so I am nearing my first seam here with a color change. And what you're looking for when you do this, um, and it looks like my stitches are actually gonna be off. Um, so I'll show you, <laughs> uh, when you get to the color change, what you want to have happen is for your um, needle that picks up these two stitches to have two of the light colored bars on it with, um, you want to have two light colored bars on it, but you want that second bar to be the yarn that's coming through the color change stitch. So you should have two light bars with the V's of a white stitch and the V's of a color change stitch on there. But I'm slightly off, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull out my last stitch that I just made and make a correction here. And there's my needle that I'm hoping just slides through nicely for me. There we go. All right, so I just pulled out my last stitch because what I wanna do <clears throat> is I have two bars here. What I'm actually going to do is just pick up one extra bar so that it will go through one, two, three bars on this side because I'm making that correction. Um, if you need to make a correction, you do whatever you need to do. Just work back a couple of stitches um, to make sure that when you get to... Um, that first stitch where you're actually working into the next color that it's correct. And I will put a picture up on the screen here, a still photo, so you can see exactly what you want it to look like with the yarn on your needle. So I should be good now. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up this bar here in that last set of light colored V's, and then I'm going to pick up that light colored bar that is in between these navy colored V's. All right, so that's what I want on this needle. So I'm gonna pull that through. Okay, so I actually had to go back and make one more correction because I was slightly off on my stitches on this side as well. So I went back and did the same thing because of what I needed to correct. I needed to pick up one more bar on this side. So now I can show you exactly <laughs> what this will look like. So you will have, like I said, 
that light colored bar through the light colored V's, the light colored bar through the color change V's, and then on the other side, you want to pick up the light colored bar through the colored V's, that's your next stitch that you need to have there, and then you wanna pick up the next bar that is the color, sorry, this the yarn is navy in this color change, so it's hard to see. You wanna pick up the navy bar on the opposite side of your blanket. Again, I'll put a picture, a still photo, so you can see exactly what that looks like. Hopefully you can see that even with the dark color of yarn and pull that through. Once you have that exact configuration on your needle for um, lining up this join here, you should not have any other issues the whole way down the stretch of the blanket. So if you correct where you need to, here at the beginning on this first color change, all your other color changes should be correct. Um, <clears throat> it's just getting those to line up. Um, as long as your row counts were correct when you were making the blanket, you should now be good to go from here picking up two bars on the first side and then your two bars on the other side and pulling through. And I will do this color change here. I'll stitch all the way through it so you can see what bars you need to have on your needle as you're coming out of the color change just to kind of check your work, so to speak. Now, this is me being a perfectionist. I always want my joins to be as seamless as possible. If you are less concerned about that than I am, then, you know, maybe you don't feel the need to go back and correct. You're good with things being just having a tiny little jog in it but I am that kind of perfectionist that just wants my joins to be perfect so um, that is how you can correct to, to get those joins perfect without having to rip everything back um, and start your mattress stitch again because that's that's a process and that's trial and error and you know I had to do that a couple times when I first did this not realizing what I needed to look for and it was tedious and I hated it and it yeah so if I can save you that step I'm going to do that um, so we're getting near the end here this is my last pickup here of a colored bar that's between um, darkly colored V's on that side and so here we are coming out of the color change I am picking up one dark colored bar on this side and a dark colored bar on this side, but this dark colored bar is the yarn that is going through the light colored V's. Okay? That's how you know you haven't missed anything when you get to the end of your color change. And then you go over to the other side and you have a dark colored V there. And my next V should be or my next bar should be a light colored V. Just like that. Okay? And I will post another still picture up here that I took so that you can see that maybe better, not in the navy yarn. I think I did it with a green color change when I took those pictures. So that might be helpful for you. And that's all there is to it. And you can see on this side how on the front of your blanket there's no jugs at all. We got it right. We did it. We adjusted. And even where I had to stitch adjust here to pick up three bars to make sure that it was lining up correct, it doesn't look puckered at all. It hides perfectly. You don't see it. So go ahead and work all the way down to the end. I will show you what to do when you get to the end of your mattress stitch join. And then I will show you fringe. And then you'll be done with your blanket. Hooray, we're nearly there. All right, so I've mattress stitched down the entire length of the panel here, and I'm very nearly at the end of my join. I apologize if you hear my daughter crying in the other room. She's with her dad, she's fine. She's just a little extra tired and not wanting to sleep. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do my last few stitches here. I'm still following that pattern of pick up two bars on one side and then pick up two bars on the next side. Trying not to catch my yarn here, there we go. And pull that through. 
Now, as I've been going down the length of the blanket, when I tighten up my stitches and pull them tight like that, I also go ahead and tug it this way. That way you're not gonna get um, any hard line that has no stretch in your blanket. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> so I have just a couple stitches left here. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up this last stitch. I only have one bar on this side. My tails are wanting to get tangled in here. And then I have one bar left on this side, so I'm going to pick up my last bar here. And pull that. And now to tie off, what I do is that I go through this top, two bars on the top here. And then the top two bars on this side here. And I usually loop that through a couple of times doing the same thing just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And that the end is going to have a nice finish right there. So I'll go through one more time. And because I didn't um, sew in my end here, what I could do is I could just tie this to this end and then stitch them both inside. Or you can do um, like a French knot on um, one of the yarn strands here. So what I'll probably do, just because this is right here, I will go ahead and just tuck this under so it's just a little bit closer to that yarn end from my panel. And I will go ahead and tie these two strands together. Here, cut my yarn over so it's not so long and tangly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna overhand knot these two together. One, and two, make sure it's nice and tight. And then all I have to do is just thread these on my needle and weave in my end there. And I have a nice, nice join on my end, just like that. So I usually don't weave in any of my tails on my panels from uh, closing up my seams until I have all of my panels joined together just for the sake of being able to, to do that. So. That is our last panel attached. You can see the jogs here on the back side, but if I flip it over, excuse me, to show the front side of the work, you can see how, because we did the hard work of making sure that we had the perfect lineup for our yarn on the front side, I have no jog overs and a perfectly seamless join here. So. That is how to do the joining of the panels. So let me show you how to do the fringe next. And the way that I do my fringe, <clears throat> set the blanket to the side here a minute. Grab um, your main color working yarn here. And then I would grab a notebook. I will back this up a little bit here so you can see. Um, for wrapping your yarn, that way you always have the same length of fringe and hopefully you won't have to do any fringe trimming. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on the ground here. I put the tail end of my yarn down at the bottom of my book. And then I just wrap this around a bunch of times, trying to keep the tension similar, not too tight, not too loose. And that will give me the exact same length of fringe down the entire length of the blanket. It's kind of a nice little trick for getting that done. Now you're gonna need more yarn than this for your fringe, but I don't wanna sit here wrapping yarn for forever. So you want your the tail that you started with down at the bottom, and then you're gonna cut your yarn down at the bottom as well. And then 
go ahead and down the bottom of the book here. I'm gonna take my scissors. I'm just gonna trim along the bottom of all that yarn. Let that all go there. And this is all still lined up down here, as you can see. And then I just fold this in half because I don't need it to be that long. Make sure that my things are not bunched up here. So I'm going to fold that in half, just like that, and then I'm going to cut along that crease, that fold, right there as well. So now I have a bunch of fringe strands that are just about the exact same length. So that works out really, really well for me. So this side of the blanket here, I've already woven in my ends. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, do I have a crochet hook here? Hold on, let me grab a crochet hook. I have a crochet hook, I have my fringe strands, and you wanna start in the outermost set of bars down on the bottom here. And I am going to poke my hook in underneath those two bars, grab a strand of yarn, and go ahead and loop it over your hook. Get it a little closer so you can see. Loop it over your hook and just pull it through those two bars and then hold on to one of the strand ends and pull the yarn all the way through. So you just have a strand of yarn coming through the bottom of your blanket here, okay? Now match your ends so they're the same length. Give it a tug so that it's the same length here. And then what I do is I just do um, a knot an overhand knot like that with both strands of yarn and then I tighten that down nice and close to the edge of the blanket but not so close that it's bunching see if you can sorry I've got a bit of a shadow from my camera and the lighting but you can see that's where my knot is close but there's still a little bit of room for this to move back and forth so it's not like pinching the yarn. And just tighten that down. And I have my first bit of fringe. And then um, when you're doing your fringe, you do not want to go into every single set of bars or bumps down because then you will have too much fringe because if you think about it there's technically it's two strands of yarn in one stitch so if you do every single one it just it makes this kind of stretch out funny and it doesn't look quite right so skip the next one right here go into the next set of bars right there grab another strand of yarn hook it on your hook Pull that through. Make sure you're holding on to one of the ends so you don't pull it all the way through. And then just tuck that so you got it looped through. Match your ends. Give it a tug so it's the same length. Wrap it over your finger like that. And take both strands through the hole and take that knot and just snug it down so it is close to your edge. Just like that. And you do that down the whole length of the blanket. And as you can see, because I pre-measured my yarn, my fringe is the same length. Now if you want it longer or shorter, that just depends on what you choose to wrap it around. If I get this all done and I decide that the fringe is looking a little long, because it looks a little bit long, I might go along and trim maybe an inch off of that, but ultimately 
It just depends. I'm really not super concerned about it as long as it looks okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and work the fringe all the way down and that is all that you need to do to finish this blanket. So I'm gonna get this worked up and then I will see you here at the end, go over a couple things for you and so you can see what the finished project looks like. All right, you guys, that's all there is to it. I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. If you found this content valuable, please like and subscribe to the channel. This was definitely a labor of love for me. This blanket and tutorial took quite a bit of my time and energy, but I'm so glad that I get to share it with you guys. Be sure to um, give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> If you found it helpful, I know it was a marathon, it's a long, long video, but I think that you should have all the information that you need, tips, tricks, best practices, to make sure that your blanket turns out beautiful. All right, thanks so much, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. <coughs>